Hi, this is Dong Wei. I'm a fellow at Tom. I have a colleague, Sema Al Haj Mahmoud, a senior principal architect uh, from ARM. Today, we're going to talk about open system firmware on ARM. Uh, there are two parts of our agenda. I'm going to talk about a specification called ARM based boot requirements that we are developing. And Sema is going to talk about the open source firmware projects that ARM and the partners are participating in. First, let me talk about the ARM-based boot requirements specification. The objective of the specification is to cover the A-class processor uh, markets uh, beyond just the servers. And we are going to continue the current eBBR spec with the community development approach. eBBR is an existing specification and BBR spec is going to refer to the eBBR spec as needed. In the BBR spec, we're going to establish the interface requirements. We're going to cover the PSCI, SMCCC. Those kind of interfaces are common to all boot models. And then we are going to cover the UEFI, ACPI, and SM BIOS. These interfaces are used in the current existing SBBR uh, specification, uh, but in the new BBR arrangement, we, we are going to have these requirements for what we call the SBBR recipe. We're going to talk about the what it means for these recipes. And then we are also going to create uh, some exceptions to the UEFI and ACPI uh, requirements for another recipe, what we call the ESBBR. I'm going to again talk about what each of the recipe looks like. We are also going to cover the device tree requirements uh, because some of the boot models are going to use the device trees. So in the document currently, we created four different recipes. Uh, the SBBR is basically a recipe that models after the current SBBR specification with the UEFI, ACPI, and SM BIOS requirements. We created a new ESBBR. Um, basically, ESBBR recipe is also requiring the U UEFI, ACPI, and SM BIOS requirements, but allows for some exceptions. We also created a recipe called eBBR. Basically, these are the requirements we refer back to the eBBR specification. It requires the UEFI uh, interface. And then we also created uh, another recipe called LBBR, uh, which is to support some of the hyperscalers who want to use Linux boot as the boot model. So all these recipes probably would make more sense as we look at the system firmware landscape today. We originally have the SBBR specification. That specification requires the UEFI, ACPI, and SM BIOS interfaces. And it was created originally for the server market. And the operating systems that are requiring the SBBR are the operating systems like uh, Red Hat, Microsoft Windows, and some of the other OSs like uh, AWS, uh, Amazon Linux, uh, Oracle Linux, and VMware uh, ESXi. Many other operating systems can also support SBBR. These are the operating systems like Ubuntu, SUSE, FreeBSD, and NetBSD. So SBBR supports a wide variety of operating systems today. Even though it is created for the server market, um, it is really targeting the operating systems. So it, it is actually covering uh, multiple markets, including Edge and uh, client spaces as well. On the right-hand side, you, you've got a few hyperscalers like Google and Facebook. Uh, 
they would like to use Linux boot as the boot model. So we support that as well with the LBBR recipe. On the left-hand side, also uh, in the embedded space, or as we look at the, uh, the edge space as well, there are a lot of devices developed with the U-Boot um, boot model. And we could put UEFI interfaces on top. Uh, that is what uh, the EBBR um, is all about. And it could support the operating systems, you know, like Ubuntu, SUSE, FreeBSD, NetBSD as well, and Yocto. Um, so we have these kind of different recipes for uh, different uh, targeted operating systems. We created this new ESBBR in between EBBR and SBBR for the OSs like uh, VMware. Uh, this is the area where you could have some edge devices uh, that are trying to support some of these OSs uh, with the aspiration to be very close to SBBR. Uh, but you know, it's, it's, it is may, it may be a bit more flexible to support uh, some of the hardware that is not designed for the server space. So, um, so we created these recipes, as I talked about before. Um, so in, in this summary, I basically identified the interfaces that are needed for each of the recipe. And then the operating systems uh, that the recipe is targeting. So there are two elements. Some of the OSs are requiring uh, one recipe. You know, for example, Windows and uh, Red Hat, uh, they require the SBBR recipe, right? But a bunch of other operating systems are capable of supporting uh, multiple of these recipes. So I tried my best to document uh, the separation of these different OSs that are supported by uh, the different uh, recipes. And this is, of course, subject to change. And so people wonder, you know, what are the relationships among these different recipes? So I tried to put together some pictures to show the relationships. So in this diagram, you can see that um, basically, eBBR is requiring UEFI. People can use either device tree or ACPI to uh, put together a system. Uh, and to realize the UEFI, you could use either U-Boot as the foundation implementation or the UEFI uh, interfaces. And then on top of that, um, so if, if you want to build systems that are ESBBR compliant, you pretty much follow the eBBR type of requirements on UEFI, and then you still have to use ACPI and SM BIOS for the operating systems like VMware. And then, you know, traditionally the SBBR recipe is basically requiring the UEFI, ACPI, and SM BIOS um, interfaces. Of course, the the PSCI and SMCCC, these are the interfaces that uh, we expose to all these uh, different uh, recipes as well. So for the hyperscalers that are using Linux boot, uh, they can pretty much replace the UEFI side of the implementation, and they can choose to use device tree or ACPI as well. Um, so so the the LBBR recipe basically supports the type of OSs that these hyperscalers are owning. It is theoretically possible to put a UEFI ABI on top to support the SBBR recipe as well. Uh, so Google actually demoed a proof of concept to put UEFI ABIs on top of Linux boot, and that ABI can support the booting of Windows. Uh, but that is a, a proof of concept uh, that Google has shown at the Open Source Firmware Summit last year. Uh, 
We also have a specification called server-based manageability requirements. Uh, this is a document that uh, basically specifies the hardware and firmware requirements for standard system management uh, for the servers. And basically it provides the foundation for common capabilities and value add on top. Uh, it builds on top of some of the industry standards for system management, like uh, DMTF, Redfish, or MCTP, uh, PLDM, hardware management uh, specifications from OCP as well. Um, of course, uh, as the industry migrates from IPMI to Redfish, uh, we also support IPMI uh, during the transition. So with that, I'd like to hand over to Sema to talk about the open source uh, firmware projects that ARM and, and the partners are participating in. Thank you, Dong. Um, so let's take a look at the various ARM open source firmware projects that are um, uh, that that make up the uh, components of um, uh, boot firmware uh, on uh, the ARM ecosystem. One thing to first note is that uh, ARM systems support uh, a variety of boot models that include uh, commercial as well as open source firmware implementations. It is ARM's strategy to encourage our partners to provide full open source firmware implementations wherever possible, regardless of the boot model. So if you look at some of these, uh, example um, open source projects. We have the Trusted Firmware project, which is the open source for implementing the secure world firmware on ARM systems. Uh, we have Tiano Core and EDK2, uh, which provides implementation for many of the standards uh, that Don mentioned, um, including the UEFI, ACPI, and SMBIOS, uh, along with platform, sample platform implementations for ARM systems. We have U-Boot, an open source project that is suitable for embedded uh, system firmware. Uh, and of course, we have Linux Boot for the, uh, for the Linux uh, Boot uh, model uh, that uh, some uh, uh, cloud providers uh, prefer. And finally, we'll talk a little bit about the OpenBMC as a BMC open source uh, firmware project. So starting with trusted firmware, uh, the uh, this is an open source, open governance community project. It started as the ARM trusted firmware and um, over time uh, moved to become uh, a completely uh, open community owned uh, project. Uh, and that's, that's the drop of the uh, ARM uh, part of the name. Uh, it provides reference implementations for secure word firmware for uh, uh, ARM architectures. Um, both the A and the M profile uh, architectures with membership open to all and governance overseen by uh, a, tech, uh, a board member uh, representatives and uh, direction by a technical steering committee. So you can look at the, at the history of the project and where it started a few years ago as, a, as an ARM driven project and has evolved to be a completely uh, community owned uh, open project. Today, the trusted firmware uh, 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 project involves a diverse community of uh, many uh, contributors um, from the ARM ecosystem with code that enables uh, a large number of uh, platforms uh, and boards from different vendors. And specifically under the trusted firmware uh, project, the trusted firmware uh, dash A or the TFA is uh, the secure word reference uh, implementation for the ARM Cortex A and the Neoverse uh, generation of processors across all market segments. So this includes the implementation of ARM specifications such as the uh, SMCCC, uh, the PSCI, and the SCMI uh, interfaces. And you can see the links here that, uh, to the source repository. Uh, as well as the uh, testing uh, uh, framework. The TFA uh, boot uh, covers uh, the both the uh, uh, 
the, the implementations in TFA cover both the boot, uh, the secure boot uh, flow, as well as the runtime uh, secure word uh, interfaces. And the secure boot uh, flow uh, covers all phases uh, uh, up till the transition to uh, the uh, uh, the host uh, firmware uh, or the non-secure word firmware, whether it's UEFI uh, or U-Boot, for instance, or, or Linux boot and uh, loading the uh, final OS uh, bootloader. The next project I'm going to talk about is the Tiano Core uh, project. Tiano Core is a community open source project that centers around the implementation of the uh, UEFI standard with the multiple specifications uh, around that standard. So that includes the, uh, the PI, the platform initialization standard, uh, from the UEFI forum, as well as the ACPI standard and the SMBIAS standard. The main project in uh, Tiano Core is uh, called EDK2, uh, which is a modern feature-rich uh, feature uh, cross-platform firmware development environment. And uh, it includes an EDK2 platforms uh, folder that has the sample implementation or the complete implementation for many silicon uh, drivers and the platforms. The ARM eco uh, ecosystem uh, has been using um, the Tiano Core EDK2 project and today on EDK2 platforms, we have um, a good number of either complete or partial implementations of platforms, silicon drivers, as well as libraries and support code. It's a diverse community uh, participation. Uh, from uh, multiple players uh, with the anticipation of continuous increase in this uh, in this community as more uh, uh, ARM platforms that implement these standards, the UEFI and ACPI standards, uh, choose the path of uh, opening, sourcing uh, the, the support code and releasing it, upstreaming it to Tiano Core. An example uh, of a platform that uh, that arm has uh, collaborated with the community on uh, developing the firmware for is the uh, raspberry pi um, uh, device the, the the raspberry pi has official firmware from the raspberry pi uh, foundation uh, but also has um, an open source firmware that is being developed uh, with the community and that is available on the tiano core project uh, this is uh, a collaboration that is led uh, by uh, VMware and ARM uh, and participation from others in the community. The code um, is uh, contributed and upstreamed to Tiano Core ADK2 platforms, and it includes uh, both. Uh, it includes a UEFI implementation with both uh, ACPI and Device Tree uh, flavors that uh, that are available uh, as sample code. Um, with the goal of with the UEFI and ACPI and SMBIAS uh, code to uh, show how you can uh, implement standards like uh, SBBR uh, on the smallest of devices like the Raspberry Pi. The next firmware I'm going to talk about is the U-Boot firmware. The U-Boot is an open source GPL licensed firmware that is suitable for embedded and edge devices that are mostly uh, a vertically integrated ecosystem. It's portable, uh, easy to, uh, to port and debug, and today supports um, many uh, boards uh, that are available upstream, uh, uh, including a large number of ARM uh, uh, systems. U-Boot, uh, as we said, is um, as uh, an implementation that's suitable for these uh, embedded systems, which makes it very good for implementing, a very good choice for implementing the UEFI ABI um, as required by EBBR uh, specification. Uh, that support is available uh, today, and it includes um, UEFI and device tree uh, combinations uh, that allow standard OS bootloaders uh, to, lo to load and, and boot uh, standard OSs while still implementing uh, the required uh, interfaces to, uh, to ARM systems, in including uh, interfaces uh, 
and uh, that are implemented in the trusted firmware. The next project I'm going to talk about is the uh, Linux boot project. This is another open source uh, uh, firmware implementation for servers uh, that's uh, uh, preferred uh, by some uh, cloud providers, including Google and Facebook, like Don mentioned earlier. Uh, it is an implementation that aims at reusing the existing Linux drivers without the need to write separate firmware flavor of the driver. So if you already have a device driver support, uh, in, in the form of a Linux driver, you can leverage that and use it in the firmware phase uh, without having to write an, a new driver uh, from, uh, uh, from scratch. Um, it does uh, support booting on ARM systems, uh, like Dong mentioned uh, earlier. I'm going to summarize the uh, two approaches that are being uh, uh, used to uh, run Linux boot uh, on ARM uh, devices. Um, uh, as well as uh, show some some example. Um, uh, for, for instance, there's some community work now to uh, make some of this uh, available as a sample on the ARM and one SDP uh, reference uh, platform. The first approach is very simple. It is um, loading the Linux boot um, uh, firmware payload in UEFI. Uh, so it is it's really, if you look at the stack, it is running UEFI, well, trusted firmware for, for the secure boot, and then running UEFI on top of that, and embedding Linux boot as a target payload that UEFI uh, then loads and runs. Um, uh, in doing so, you could replace or uh, remove many of the uh, Dixie drivers or uh, components in UEFI, uh, if the Linux boot uh, module is going to provide that uh, firmware equivalent functionality anyway. Uh, this this method is also called the shell replacement method because it's the easiest way to do it on existing firmware is uh, to just replace the shell binary in the firmware um, image with the Linux boot binary. The second approach uh, is to directly load Linux boot uh, from trusted firmware, completely bypassing uh, UEFI. Uh, in this approach, the uh, binary uh, blobs or payloads needed by the final operating system, such as, as CPI uh, table uh, binary, or known uh, configuration and uh, pre-assembled uh, payloads of those tables. So as an example for this approach uh, number two, you can have the trusted firmware layer directly uh, load the Linux boot uh, kernel uh, decompressor, uh, uh, which then decompresses the Linux boot uh, image uh, and uh, the next boot kernel image, as well as the built-in binary uh, payloads, such as ACPI and device three and SMBIOS. Um, uh, and by the way, I say ACPI, it could be ACPI or device three, it doesn't have to be, uh, you need both, right? So it depends on the final OS uh, target. Uh, and then the Linux boot kernel would load those binaries in a place in, of memory where the final OS uh, would locate them. One last word on Linux boot is, um, uh, and this is this is to continue what uh, what Dong mentioned earlier on the relationship between the interfaces and the specifications. Uh, while it's possible with this approach number two on ARM systems to completely bypass UEFI and just carry the binaries needed for the final OS as payload and expose them uh, by Linux boot, uh, it is also in, in theory possible for Linux boot to present a minimal UEFI ABI for that the final OS needs, for example, for the runtime interfaces uh, such as get variable and set variable if the OS uh, has dependency on those. Uh, so all this flexibility is available with this approach. And finally, uh, while we covered mostly system firmware in our presentation uh, on ARM ecosystem, uh, it is um, 
uh, worth noting uh, the OpenBMC project as a BMC firmware uh, component for ARM systems. So as uh, uh, we mentioned uh, earlier, ARM, uh, uh, in addition to all these recipes for system firmware boot like SBDR and EDDR, uh, ARM also has uh, released um, uh, the SBMR specification, which is the server-based manageability uh, requirements. That specification um, uh, explains or illustrates the requirements for building a server with a BMC and the uh, relationship and interfaces between the host uh, and the BMC and the external interfaces between the BMC and the user. Uh, uh, and the, that specification actually refers to the OpenBMC project as a sample uh, uh, where some of these uh, implementations uh, can uh, be made available. Uh, that concludes our uh, presentation. Uh, uh, we leave you with a call to action uh, to join the OCP uh, Open System Firmware uh, Group, uh, the, uh, the uh, conference calls, um, and the project details uh, are open. Um, you could you could uh, check out the uh, the schedule and join the uh, the meetings uh, on this link provided, uh, as well as join the mailing list uh, for uh, the project. And uh, a call to action specifically for the ARM ecosystem is to continue this message from R to to our partners and to our ecosystem to open your system firmware and upstream to Tiano Core trusted firmware U boot. Uh, or depending on the boot model uh, used on those platforms. Q&A is now live. Sorry, this is Tom. Any questions? Looking at some of the questions, um, it looks like we have a question uh, talking about um, uh, whether uh, Opti uh, is used uh, uh, on is a preferred implementation for ARM. Um, so Opti is um, uh, is uh, is uh, available as part of the uh, uh, trusted firmware. Uh, community project. Uh, for more information, you can check the trustedfirmware.org website. Uh, it's used more in, in the mobile segment, but 
details are available on the Trusted Firma website. Another question is on the uh, core boot uh, that uh, uh, core boot uh, was not mentioned, uh, even though it's available uh, on uh, ARM Chromebooks uh, and it is OSF uh, compliant. Uh, the answer from Dong is uh, that uh, core boot was mentioned in the landscape uh, slide uh, where we explain the uh, uh, the different landscapes of the system firmware uh, on ARM, uh, obviously for Chromebooks, uh, it is um, just not not used as part of the OCP context, so there was no dedicated detailed slide for that. Yeah, there was a there was a question about does ARM have any plan to develop any hardware to demonstrate this open source standards? Well, we we have the N1 SDP as uh, Samer mentioned in his slides, um, where where we actually have the open source implementations for uh, Tiano Core as as well as the next boots. Um, and uh, I think Samer also went through many open source projects where, you know, we worked on the, the you know, the hardware, like like the Raspberry Pi, right? So, yeah. So as as we, um, you know, get our hands on some of the hardware, uh, we we are demonstrating these uh, open source uh, projects on on these hardware. There was a question about is there any reason why trusted firmware does not or cannot apply to the R series profile? Um, I think the trusted firmware is more related to the the trust zone, the secure world, right? The the R profile um, currently does not have a project for trusted firmware as an open source um, project. Uh, we do have an M class. Um, project trusted firmware M uh, because M class does have uh, the, the secure world implementations. Uh, there was also a question in the chat window about will the Linux boot from TFA approach uh, have support for secure boots? Well, uh, I guess it depends on what you mean by secure boot. If if it is based on the UEFI secure boot, uh, then the the Linux boot, uh, the pure Linux boot uh, approach, is not using that because there's no UEFI involved uh, when Linux boot uh, is is coming from the trusted firmware A. Right, um, but Linux boot uh, has its own, you know, approach for for verified boot. Yeah, Ron Minick also had a note about Linux boot is being used uh, for IoT embedded devices. Uh, yes, certainly. Um, uh, I, I think we just didn't, uh, you know, emphasize that uh, uh, because the, the talk is more oriented towards the OCP hyperscaler applications. Uh, yeah, that's true. 
Okay, uh, do we have any other questions? Okay, I think we're done. Uh, thank you very much.